so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look. An empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull out our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. shower. Does somebody want to come use the bathroom while I'm in here?
so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look. An empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull out our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. shower. Does somebody want to come use the bathroom while I'm in here? A teenage boy had just passed his driving test and inquired of his mother when, when maybe he could use the family car to drive. And his mother said she'd make a deal with her son. She said, you bring your grades up from a C to a B average, study your Bible a little, and get your hair cut. And then we'll talk about the car. The boy thought about that for a moment, decided he had settled for the offer, and they agreed on it. About six weeks later, the mother said, Son, you've done good. You've brought your grades up. I've observed that you've been studying your Bible, but I'm a little disappointed you have not cut your hair. The boy said, You know, Mom, I've been thinking about that. He said, I've been reading the Bible, and in my studies, I come to find out that Samson had long hair, and... John the Baptist had long hair, and it looks like Moses had long hair, and there's even strong evidence that Jesus had long hair. Without hesitation, the mom said, did you also notice they walked everywhere they went? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I heard somebody say that was a good one that time. Thank you for that. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> Yeah. Three sons left home. I should stop while I'm ahead, I know, but three sons left home. They went out on their own and they prospered. Years later, they got back together to discuss the gifts they were able to give their elderly mother for her 90th birthday. The first one said, I built a big house for our mother. The second one said, I sent her a Mercedes with a driver. The third one smiled and said, I got you both beat, you know. How mom, she enjoys to read the Bible, and you know she can't see very well, so I sent her a parrot that can recite her the entire Bible. It took 20 monks in a monastery 12 years to teach this parrot. It was worth it, though. I had to pledge $100,000 a year for 10 years, but it was worth every penny because they trained that parrot to recite the whole Bible. All mom's got to do is say the verse, and the parrot will recite that verse to her. So it wasn't long after, Mom sent out her letters to thank her kids, and, and her letters said this. She said, Milton, to my first son, she wrote, The house you built is so huge, I can only live in one room, but I've got to clean the whole house. Marvin, she wrote to him, she said, Son, I'm too old to travel, so I stay home all the time, so I've never used the Mercedes, and that driver, is, he's, he's just rude anyway. And then he said, then she said to her third son, Melvin, she said, You were the only son that had a good enough sense to know what your mother liked. 
And I just want you to know that chicken was delicious. <laughs> Mama and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 27 and 28. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit does not see male or female, does not see young or old, does not see black or white. Your Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And Lord, we've been baptized in your Spirit, and we have received your Holy Spirit. And so there is no limitations as to what you can do through each and every one of us. I pray today, God, that you will help us. Lord, this day is a celebration for some. It is a very difficult day for some. Lord, and we understand that and we know that. But God, you are the God of the mountain and the God of the valley. You're God of the good times and the bad. You're the God... When there's joy and you're the God when there is sorrow. So I pray, Lord, that today your Holy Spirit will minister to us. And call us to rise up to be the people that you have called us to be in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. My mother showed me the Holy Spirit. My mother showed me the Holy Spirit. Now, I wanted to say, what I started to write down there was, my mother taught me about the Holy Spirit, but that would not be completely accurate. Because it's one thing to teach something, it's another thing to show it. My mother taught me and showed me the Holy Spirit. As a kid, I watched as others flew off the handle, and my mom, would, she would keep calm. As others would spread rumors and gossip and dissension, my mom would not join in. When there was strife in the church, and let me tell you all something, sometimes there's strife in the church. <laughs> I've been pastor for 20 years, and before that, I was in the church for 26 years, and Sometimes there's strife in the church. And I would watch as people would choose sides and people would take sides and people would build their arguments. And I watched as my mother would call for unity and would talk about being a peacemaker. She showed me the Holy Spirit. John 14 and verse 16. I will pray the Father... And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Comforter. That was my mom. And that is who the Holy Spirit is. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Pastor, we got a lot of people in this room. Are you going to use today just to talk about your mom? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to talk about my mom, because I know that you're going to see your mom and a lot of things that I talk about, and I hope that you're going to see, see you, but more than anything, I hope that you can see the Holy Spirit, because Jesus called the Holy Spirit a comforter, and that's what my mom was, that's what my mom is. My mom can tell when something's on my mind, my mom can tell when something's been bothering me, my mom can tell, even though none of you can tell that something's troubling me in the church or about the church or things that's going on, I'll get a call from my mom asking me if everything's okay. 
She's a comforter. That's who the Holy Spirit is, a comforter. The Holy Spirit is also called helper. If we're honest today, our moms helped us in so many ways. And when you need help, one of the first people you look to is your mom. And if you are a mom, when your kids need help, you're one of the first ones they come, if not the first one they come to, to get help. He's also called an advocate. Holy Spirit is called an advocate. And moms are a great advocate. They can be very peaceable and very loving and very calm, but if they need to be an advocate for their kids, they're going to be an advocate. Don't cross mama over the kids because they'll be an advocate. Jesus described God and the Holy Spirit in different occasions the same way that you would describe a mother. He told Israel in Matthew 23, He said, How often I've wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. And he went on to say, but you wouldn't let me. Moms, even when we won't let them, they don't give up, do they? Even when you push them back and ignore them and do your own thing and go your own way, they still want to be that mother hen. They still want to do their best to protect you, to give you what they can give you and to support you the way that you need support. My mom showed me the Holy Spirit, y'all. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring, come what may. But nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaking. And it never fails or falters even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns, and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It is far beyond defining. It defies all explanation, and it still remains a secret like the mysteries of creation. A many-splendored miracle man cannot understand, and another wondrous evidence of God's tender, guiding hand. My mom showed me the Holy Spirit. And my mom showed me that the Holy Spirit is not partial. Look at your neighbor and say, the Holy Spirit is not partial. It's not partial. The Holy Spirit is not a guy thing or a girl thing. The Holy Spirit doesn't change who He is because of who He inhabits. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit doesn't say, this is a woman. So I'm limited in what I can do. Now I know that many of you may not agree with me, but I'm preaching today, so you've got to hear it. The Holy Spirit does not come and dwell inside a woman and say, Alright, I'm limited because this is a woman. Or I'm limited because this is a young person. Or I'm limited because this person doesn't have experience. Or I'm limited because this person has a disability. Or I'm limited because this is not the brightest bulb. I can attest to that. The Holy Spirit indwells us. And He's the same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit in men and in women. Because there is only one Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11, but one and the same Holy Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. The Holy Spirit chooses how to use us. The Holy Spirit chooses how He uniquely wired us and how He's going to use us. And then He prompts us and challenges us and stirs our passions and gives us interest. And sometimes we look at ourselves and we're like Moses. We're like, I can't do this. I can't, I'm, not a, I'm not a good speaker. I can't do this. I stutter. I can't do this. But He chooses and distributes. And who are we to question God? Who are we to question God? God.
We don't choose, He does. And every person that receives the Holy Spirit has unlimited potential in what can be done through them. Even leaders. You mean women can be leaders? <laughs> I, I, this just, I find it mind-boggling that we limit. This one really gets me. Churches have argued for years and years of whether or not women can preach or teach or be pastors or be leaders. The real question is this, can the Holy Spirit who fills us teach or preach or pastor or lead? Because none of us are qualified on our own to be anything useful to the kingdom of God. And the only thing we ever do that's useful to the kingdom of God is let the Holy Spirit work through us. And so when the Holy Spirit calls you to preach, He will enable you to preach. I'm the last one. I, if I was God, I would have picked me last to be a preacher. An introvert. I run from crowds. I hide from the groups. Even family reunions, I find it, I find it difficult because I, I'd rather be by myself. I'd rather be alone. It's my... It's my tendency. April, I married an introvert. We're both introverts. We hardly ever have company over. It's just who we are. It's our, it's our tendency. Our go-to is to be together alone. <laughs> to be around people sucks energy from me. It's just, that's just who I am. But Holy Spirit said, hey... I'm going to use you. I'm going to speak to you in your own special, unique way. You may not sound like T.D. Jakes. I wish I could. You know, I wish I could strut across the stage like that. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I wish I could. But I am who I am by the Holy Spirit. And whether you're a guy or a lady, a man or a woman, a, a child or a grown-up, the Holy Spirit has all the potential in you that He has in me. <laughs> I grew up in church, I already told you that. So I feel like I have authority when I speak to this matter. And I would dare say that women, even in churches that they don't acknowledge women as leaders, Women many times are the backbone and the leaders of churches, whether the church wants to realize it or not. And I, I would dare say that most churches, if you came in and you took out half the ladies in the church, the church wouldn't make it for six months. The pastor would wear himself out. Because it is the ladies, even when they're forced to lead in the shadows, and even when they're told by men that they can't be out on the front or in the spotlight, they lead anyway. And they lead the church in prayer and intercession. And they lead the church in worship. And they lead the church in, in giftings and how to live and how to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm glad that we're in a church that doesn't limit the women. I'm glad that we're in a church that recognizes that the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And if He's called and gifted you to preach, then preach it, lady. If He's called and gifted you to teach, then teach it. If He's called and gifted you to be a shepherd, then who are we to say, No, God! See, the Spirit has a history of empowering women. All throughout Scripture, there was a lady by the name of Deborah. She led the entire nation of Israel. Uh, probably because there weren't any good men at the time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say that with a lady sitting beside you. We'll see what happens. No, it's because God chose Deborah. God chose her and said, you're going to be the judge. You're going to be the leader. Miriam led the people of God to worship on the other side of the Red Sea. And she led beside Moses 
millions of people. Huldah, y'all probably don't even know who Huldah is. She's in the Bible. But she led God's people into reformation when the book of the law was discovered by King Josiah and it had been gone and they, they, they discovered the word and it broke everybody's heart. Huldah was one of the main leaders that brought the word back to the surface and helped the people understand the word of God again. Esther was a queen of Persia. She was a queen in a pagan nation because God put her in that place for such a time as this. And she led the Jewish people by sacrificing her own life so that they could be safe. Mary Magdalene. I call her the first apostle because an apostle is a messenger of Christ one who has seen the risen Lord and became his messenger. And Mary saw Jesus and Jesus said, go. Boy, and she went. And she told everybody what she had seen. Of all the people God could have chosen to be the first one to see the risen Lord, he chose a lady. Phoebe was a leader in the early church and she served as a deacon. Go back and read it. The Samaritan woman at the well, she led an entire city to Jesus. Jesus. Jesus decided to go out of his way to go through a town to meet a woman at a well because she could be the one to spread the word and change that city. Priscilla was a teacher in the early church and she helped explain the scriptures to others. Lydia was a businesswoman who helped Paul in his ministry. Rahab was a harlot. But she saw what the God of Israel was doing and she placed her faith in God and she gave safe refuge to God's people so that they could enter into the promised land. And she's listed in Hebrews 11 as one of the heroes of the faith. Mary, who anointed the feet of Jesus... Anointed the feet of Jesus. Remember, she broke open the box, the alabaster box, and she anointed him. And for 2,000 years, what she done has been a memorial. And in countless churches, in countless sermons, we use her as a description of true worship. The woman who had that issue of blood for 12 years. No telling how many millions of sermons are preached across the globe about that lady who had the faith to persevere and to press through and to get to Jesus because she understood. I'm going to tell you, women understand that if you can touch Jesus, it changes everything. Now I want every lady that's in here today to please stand up. From the youngest to the oldest, please stand. Because I've talked about Deborah and Phoebe and Priscilla. I've talked about Rahab and Mary. I've talked about those, but then there's you. You. What limits have you put on God? What limits have you put on what God... Oh, but you don't know my past, and I've messed up so many times. Guess what? So has everyone else around you. <laughs> the blood can reach you, and the Holy Spirit can change you, and the Holy Spirit can use you. I want you to know, if you're standing, God desires to do great things through you today. I know this isn't a typical Mother's Day message, but my mama showed me that God could do great things in me. My mom inspired that in me that I could do anything I put my mind to. And that's the Holy Spirit working through my mother. And if the Holy Spirit can work through my mother, then the Holy Spirit can work through you today. And He desires to work through you today. <laughs> but, 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 Pastor, I've been told all my life that you know, we're just not the same. We can't do the same thing as men. We don't have the same authority. I want you to listen to Joel chapter 2 and 28. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall 
prophesy. And you say, but Pastor, how do you know that's already happened? Because Peter got up in Acts chapter 2 after the Holy Spirit was poured out and he told them what had happened. He said, this has happened. This is what you see. What Joel prophesied has come about. So I want you all to know that you're, you can prophesy. Side note. You might need to change your mind about what prophecy is. Prophecy isn't all about prophesying who the president's going to be. Prophecy isn't all about proclaiming things that are going to happen next week. And if they don't happen next week, we'll twist it a little bit to make sure we weren't wrong. No. Prophesying is speaking the word of the Lord. Speaking the word of the Lord. And God says that daughters shall prophesy. Daughters shall speak the word of God. I'm so thankful I had a mom that would speak the word of God in my life. And now you can speak the word of God into someone's life. If you don't have kids, somebody's got kids around you. There's kids in the church that need you. Paul told Timothy, he said, you need to treat the older ladies like mamas. They need to be mamas to everybody in the church. Because there's people in the church that don't have mamas and they need one. And you can be one. You can be seated. I know that for some, Mother's Day is a hard day because your mother's already passed. But can we look at it a little bit differently? Whether you lost your mom last year or five years ago or ten years ago or 20 years ago, I know that you all would say the same thing. I still miss her. Whether it's been one or 50, we still miss them, right? But can you look at it a little bit differently? And when the Holy Spirit dropped this in my spirit, I said, yes, Lord, please let us see that. Can you look at it this way? When your mom went to be with Jesus, she passed the baton to you. The last thing she would want is for you to sit on the sidelines with a broken heart. She would want you to take up that baton and speak the word over your kids. Take up that baton and be a woman of God for the body of Christ. I know it's difficult for us to hear. and I try my best every Mother's Day not to make anybody cry, but I feel this in my heart so strongly. Because we're tempted to give up and let go and sit it out. But we need to see it for what it is. God graduates people. And whether we know that or not, when we leave this earth, we've graduated. It is a celebration. It's a celebration. And the graduates say to the undergraduates, it's your turn to lead. And so if you were standing, it's your turn to to lead and your children your grandchildren the church children they need you to lead they need you to lead for those of you that never knew your mother or your mother was not the best mother for whatever reason and that leaves a hole in you I want you to hear me. The only way you'll ever fill that hole in your life is if you'll go and fill it in someone else's life. I believe with all my heart that where the enemy attacks us the most, a lot of times that is our assignment. And wherever we feel most injured or most hurt, many times that is the very thing God is calling us into and so if you're hurt and you're broken because of your childhood and you're hurt or you're broken because of family and how things have filled that gap by being that for your kids or for someone else's I'm going to ask our praise team to come up maybe a 
play some music, whatever y'all want to do. If y'all want to sing a song or play, I don't, I don't care. I just want to take a few more moments here. I know that you guys want to spend some time with your family today, and I don't want to hold you any longer than we should. But I have a strong unction in my own heart to encourage all the ladies in here today to see the potential that you have, to see that the Holy Spirit in you is great and capable of anything. Can we all stand one more time, if I may ask that of you? So while we're standing, we've been taking communion as we close out every service. Uh, we've been doing this basically since COVID started. <laughs> and so we've been doing this, and God has been blessing this. And so if you want to run back there and get your communion cup, you can. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was broken for us. The Bible says, by His stripes we are healed. His body was broken like a sheep goes to the slaughter. He did not open His mouth. He did not fight against it because He willingly, willfully gave His life for us. Amen? Amen. Father, thank You. Thank You for sending Your Son. Thank You, Jesus, for doing this for us. We receive this in your name with thanksgiving. Amen. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never ever lose its power. This blood is what makes us all the same. <laughs> That's what he meant when he said that. that there's neither male nor female, Jew, Gentile, slave, free. Just go on down the line. If you're covered by the blood, you're covered by the blood. <laughs> you're a son or daughter of the Lord Most High. So communion is not just about remembering Him. Communion is about fellowship. And so, although we may come from different places, have different opinions and preferences, we are God's children, and the blood gives us unity. We're unified in Him, and we share that. Jesus, thank You for the blood. I've questioned many times why You would consider me worthy. But you did. And your grace is more than sufficient. And your blood has made all the difference. The weight has been lifted. And victory is mine because of your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.